Teenagers also sometimes think, what's the use? The world will soon be blown all apart and come to an end. That feeling comes from fear, not from faith. No one knows the hour or the day, but the end cannot come until all of the purposes of the Lord are fulfilled. Everything I have learned from revelations and from life convinces me that there is time and despair for you to carefully prepare for a long life. One day you will cope with teenage children of your own. That will serve you right. <laughs> Later, <clears throat> you will spoil your grandchildren and they in turn spoil theirs. If an earlier end should happen to come to one, that is more reason to do things right. Revelation comes in an orderly way in the church. We are entitled to personal revelation. However, unless we are set apart to some presiding office, we will not receive revelations concerning what others should do. Revelation in the church comes to those who have been properly called, sustained, ordained, or set apart. The bishop, for instance, will not receive any revelation concerning a neighboring ward because that's out of his jurisdiction. Occasionally, someone will claim to have received authority to teach and bless without having been called and set apart. That is why the process of sustaining those called to office is so carefully protected in the church, that all might know who has authority to teach and to bless. An unusual spiritual experience should not be regarded as a personal call to direct others. It is my conviction that experiences of a special sacred nature are individual and should be kept to oneself. Few things disturb the channels of revelation quite so effectively as those who th are misled and think themselves to be chosen to instruct others when they are not chosen. Brothers and sisters, over the sweep of Christian history, by focusing on a few prophecies while neglecting others, some believers have prematurely expected the second coming. Today, while obviously closer to that great moment, we are in the same danger. In the context of such cautions, I have no hesitancy in saying there are some signs, but certainly not all, suggesting that summer is nigh. We would do well to notice and to ponder, but without either becoming preoccupied or ignoring any sprouting leaves because of being overcharged with the cares of this life. Members of the Church need not and should not be alarmists. They need not be deflected from quietly and righteously pursuing their daily lives. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. 